All right, welcome to the annual shareholder meeting. Um, coming to you live from Austin, Texas. So um, we've had a fantastic year. Uh, thanks to the great work of the Tesla team. Um, I'd just like to start off by just thanking the Tesla team for the incredible work over the past year to get where, where we are. Well done. So we have uh, record vehicle deliveries, um, as uh, we've already reported this. Uh, but you can see that there's a pretty, um, I mean, I, it's, I think this might be the fastest that any large manufactured object has grown. Like, um, yeah, it's certainly one of the fastest, perhaps the fastest. Um, and um, it looks like we, we have a good chance of maintaining that into the future, uh, really dependent on um, so supplier challenges. So if, if, we, if uh, we're basically if we can get the chips, <laughs> we can do it. Um, so uh, hopefully this chip shortage will alleviate soon. But um, I feel confident um, of being able to maintain something like this at least above 50% for quite a while. The Model 3 became the best-selling premium vehicle uh, globally. So of any premium vehicle. But I, I mean, I almost got arrested at one point for claiming that we'd do 5,000 a week, literally. We're <laughs> 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 <You're> laughing now. <laughs> um, anyway, this is great. Um, we think the Model Y will be uh, the best-selling vehicle of uh, any kind globally. So we think it will, it will exceed the Model 3. Um, I think we've got a good chance of it being the best-selling vehicle by revenue next year, and then I think quite likely to be the best-selling vehicle uh, in just of, of any kind numerically in, in 2023, in 2023. So uh, basically we need, we need uh, Austin to get online and Berlin to get online and reach volume production, and then I think that's gonna happen. Um, a cash, in terms of free cash flow generation, um, obviously, we had uh, some tough years uh, back then. Um, things were looking a little dicey, to say the least, in 2017 and 2018. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't wanna go back there again. Um, but uh, we, we got through that, and now things are looking uh, really good. So I think we'll see continued uh, strong cash flow generation, uh, and uh, especially, uh, if it, as you multiply unit volume times autonomy uh, and increased efficiency in the factories. Um, uh, it, because I, I think over time, you'll see all manufacturers will make electric vehicles, and eventually, all manufacturers will make autonomous vehicles. Um, and we, I think and Tesla's open to licensing uh, autonomy, because I think autonomy will be uh, such a significant lifesaver and preventer of injuries that it, it is not a technology we want to keep to ourselves. So um, I think it will be um, morally right to, to license it to other manufacturers if they would like to, to use it. So. Um, and of course, uh, we've, we've made a lot of progress on, on cost reduction. Um, and. Uh, so despite our average selling price actually going down significantly because with the introduction of the Model 3 and Model Y, these were much lower priced cars, uh, we've managed to still do uh, decently well on, on gross margin. So this is, um, you know, get, getting the average price down and, and gross margin up is, is very difficult, uh, but we've managed to, to do that. Um, so yeah, it's good. Um, our goal really is to make the cars as affordable as possible. Um, we are seeing significant cost pressure in our supply chain, um, and uh, so we've had to increase um, uh, vehicle prices, uh, at least temporarily, but we do hope to actually reduce the prices over time and make them more affordable. Uh, so, um, yeah, unfortunately, we've, got, we've just expedited. Like, I mean, the sheer amount of money we're spending on um, flying parts around the world is, is uh, just not, not great. But 
hopefully temporary. So, and we need a lot of batteries. Uh, hence, uh, battery day is what this shirt means. Very obtuse. Um, but um, we are going to need a lot of batteries. And this is going to be um, a combination of batteries from our suppliers. Um, and in, in supplier discussions, um, you know, some of our suppliers have just asked me outright, are, are we going to just, you know, put them out of business or something? I'm like, not at all. As many cells as you want to make and supply to us at an affordable price, we will buy. No limit. I'm like, oh, okay. So, like, do you want to have, yeah, increase by 100%? Sounds good to me. Um, so the, the basic plan is uh, we're, we're really going to order a lot, of, and we have ordered a lot of batteries from suppliers, basically telling suppliers literally uh, uh, go, go as much as you can make, we'll take. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll prioritize uh, batteries for vehicles, but then use um, any excess uh, cells that we have in the Powerwall and Megapack, uh, because uh, over time we think the demand for stationary storage is going to be at least as high as the demand for vehicles. So uh, sustainable energy, primarily solar and wind, is intermittent. And so the wind doesn't blow all the time, the sun doesn't shine all the time, obviously. Um, and so you need batteries to buffer that power. Um, so the, the fundamental pillars of a sustainable energy future are uh, basically solar and wind, those are the primary uh, stationary batteries and electric transport. And if you have those three, then you have a sustainable energy future as long as the sun is shining. You know? So sometimes people ask me about fusion, and I like it as an idea. And by the way, I think it's totally doable. Um, but uh, there's a giant fusion reactor in the sky that shows up every morning, and zero maintenance. Um, so I'm like, so it sounds like a good deal. You know? uh, or just catch a little bit of that sunlight and uh, power Earth. Um, a shockingly small amount of land is needed to power Earth. <laughs> it's like, you know, a couple hundred miles uh, by a couple hundred miles of solar panels will power the entire United States. So it's like, okay, it's not that hard. Um, and then I believe we calculated you only needed one square mile of batteries. So you may think like, wow, a lot of batteries. One square mile of batteries, it's not that crazy. So anyway. Um, so we've got, we've got a plan to uh, reduce the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries. Um, and, um, and our suppliers you know, have similar plans. Uh, so this is um, really supplemental to our suppliers. Um, we'll make cells. They'll make cells. We'll use them all. Um, the, the fundamental good of Tesla, I think, is um, by how many years did we accelerate sustainable energy? This is the, the fundamental, I think, uh, way to think of the, the value of Tesla. And so if we are able to accelerate sustainable energy by more years, that is good. Um, hence the need to grow quickly. Uh, we've got three new factories. Um, Giga Shanghai has done an incredible job. Um, and uh, Giga Shanghai now exceeds uh, Fremont. Uh, in production. So, actually, I'd like to just give a special hand to the, our Tesla China team. Right. So, it's the, the best quality, lowest cost, and, uh, and also low drama. So, it's great. Um, and um, but that said, we are um, continuing to expand our Fremont uh, operations. Um, and uh, expect to uh, hopefully increase Fremont output by 50%. So, and that's still where we make all Model S and Xs are made in, in Fremont. Um, but uh, it kind of makes sense, especially for the high volume vehicles, to have production that's at least on the continent where the consumers are. Um, otherwise, it's just, it's also not good for the environment to be shipping cars, you know, several thousand miles. So, the basic idea is have the high volume vehicles be where the customers are approximately at least. Um, and then uh, also great progress with building Giga Texas, which is where we are right now, uh, and Giga Berlin Brandenburg. So just a hand for those teams as well. Um, and and the, um, the, these factories uh, will have cell production uh, in them as well. So this will be really kind of raw materials in, 
pars out. So really, really big. Um, yeah, I mean, these things will be in like units of Pentagon, basically. Uh, let's see, so impact report. Um, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, interesting stuff in our impact report. Um, we go into I, I think quite a lot of detail on um, all things we're doing. Um, and, you know, uh, Tesla is, is, is certainly a company that uh, tries very hard to do the right thing in all respects. We try very hard to do the right thing in all respects. We don't always succeed. But if you're looking for a company where you say, is that company really trying to do the right thing? That is Tesla. <laughs> okay, we really try. <laughs> it's, okay, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, anyway. So, uh, um, so uh, as I was mentioning, we've got the you know three parts of a sustainable energy future: uh, solar and wind. But I think primarily solar will be the the main source of energy uh, of sustainable energy uh, and energy in general. Um, and then you need uh, uh, to store that energy with uh, stationary battery packs, and then you need um, electric vehicles and uh, electric airplanes and boats and whatnot. So, um, yeah, great. Um, yeah, and then the uh, average life cycle emissions in the US, uh, this is only gonna get better as, as we move to a sustainable energy grid um, and, and electric vehicles then obviously we move to a fully sustainable energy economy, which is wh where we want to get to as quickly as possible. The sooner the better. And can, can there be a carbon tax? I mean, what the hell, you know? Um, so people sometimes say like, oh, carbon tax, that would benefit Tesla. I'm like, yeah, but it would, it would uh, hurt SpaceX. Uh, so how about the, the carbon tax, <laughs> which is really needed, so. Um, See, battery materials are uh, definitely encyclable. Burden gas is not. Uh, CO2 is an extremely stable molecule. Um, Mars's atmosphere has been primarily CO2 for know, billions of years. Uh, it's extremely stable. Um, so sometimes people worry about methane. Uh, do not worry too much about methane. Methane quickly breaks down into CO2. Methane is not a stable molecule. CO2 is extremely stable. Um, so, um, and of course, you can recycle battery materials. So uh, you can think of batteries as essentially high-grade ore. So you can either get your lithium and your nickel or, and, and the various constituents of the battery from uh, rocks or from batteries. It's much better to get them from batteries. So uh, batteries are basically high-grade ore. And um, Tesla has already started recycling. And there are lots of companies that are going to do recycling because it, it basically pays to do recycling for batteries. So um, we're seeing, you know, um, increased uh, extreme weather events, and uh, there's like wildfires. And here in Austin, there was a massive snowstorm that turned the power off. I was actually in Austin for that uh, snowstorm in a house with uh, no electric, no lights, no power, no heating, no internet. Couldn't actually even get to a food store. If you could get to a food store, there was no food there. That went on for several days. Um, uh, however, if we had the solar plus power wall, uh, it, the car would have had lights and electricity and actually if you had a Starlink internet, you'd have internet too. So um, all the things you need for a prepper, basically. <laughs> if doomsday comes, you know, it could be helpful. Um, so in factory safety, we've done, we've made uh, huge improvements on, on factory safety. Um, so. Uh, we're now 18% better than the industry average. So this is a, I guess this is great. Um, it's, it's always tough with safety as you ramp production lines and as you start up factories, but then as, as the, once it's in steady state, then the injuries naturally, de naturally decline because people get used to it and you iron out the issues. And so we're seeing um, excellent uh, factory safety uh, in, at Tesla. Um, and we, we're, we're, our goal is to have the safest factory on earth. And then uh, AI Day, I think it was important to uh, change the fundamental perception of, of Tesla because people do, they sort of think of Tesla as a car company and yes, we made cars, um, but, but uh, 
but the AI portion, part of Tesla was not well understood. Um, I mean, Tesla is as much a software company as it is a hardware company. And, um, and, and, as, and we also do the, the chips. Uh, so we designed the, uh, the full self-driving inference computer. Uh, we're designing a training computer that's going to be able to, we think, be the most efficient uh, neural net training computer in the world by far. Um, and um, and we're, we're seeing a tremendous response. So daily applicants by <laughs> role. Um, as you can see, it's basically, uh, you know, on the y-axis there, <laughs> and, and then after AI day, that's uh, the AI applicants increased dramatically. So I thought that was a very successful day. The team did a great job, um, and um, yeah, um, AI is going to be a very important part of the future. Uh, Self-driving is obviously one of the functions, um, and. Um, I obviously have mixed thoughts about AI, and we've got to watch out for AI being a danger. Uh, but it's happening either way, so I guess if we help do it, we can try our best to make sure it is a positive, you know, good, good AI, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, I'm excited to announce that we're moving our headquarters to Austin, Texas. So um, just to, to be clear, though, we will be continuing to expand our activities in California. So this is not a matter of, of sort of Tesla leaving California. Um, as I said, we're, we're, our, our intention is to actually increase output uh, from Fremont and from uh, Giga Nevada by 50%. So, but we're, ju we're just hitting the sides of the bowl. It, you know, um, I mean, if you go to our Fremont factory, it is jammed. I mean, it is. Jam. It's like whoa, <laughs> and when we first went in there, it was it was like, you know, we're like, we're like a, a kid in his parents' shoes. It was ridiculous, like tiny s and giant factory. And now we're like you spam in a can here. Like, <laughs> how do we put more stuff? Um, and and it's it, it it's it's tough for people to afford houses, and a lot of people have to come in from far away. And so it's uh, and we'll, we'll take you know, we're taking it as far as as possible, but it's um, there's limit to how uh, how big you can scale in, in the Bay Area. So um, we, uh, here um, in, in Austin, and our, you know, our factory is like five minutes from the airport, 15 minutes from downtown. Um, and uh, we're going to create an ecological paradise here on the car, because uh, we're right on the Colorado River. It's going to be great. So um, to emphasize gain, continuing to expand in California significantly, um, but, but, um, but even more so uh, here in Texas. So.